Hi, my name is Nathan Miller with Microsoft. Today we're going to look at the development models for SharePoint, how we can actually use the different application models with the classic applications, as well as our new application models for SharePoint 2013. Microsoft's primary investments in SharePoint 2013 is in the new SharePoint app development model. There is significant new functionality in Visual Studio 2012 for creating and debugging applications. Furthermore, the underlying development platform has been extended so that CSOM functionality has also been made available through REST as well. For Office 365, there is a new security model created based on an emerging authentication protocol known as OAuth. SharePoint solution development is still possible. This is accomplished by creating classic SharePoint projects. However, you should understand this is not a significant area of investment for improvement in SharePoint 2013. The development of Farm Solutions and Sandbox Solutions work for the most part just as it did in SharePoint 2010. Visual Studio supports two project templates for different styles of development. There's the application development as well as the classic solution development. In an application development, there's the Office SharePoint projects and you select the applications. There you see there's an apps for Office 2013 and an apps for SharePoint 2013. In the classic solution development, you select SharePoint Solutions, just as you did in SharePoint 2010, and you'll notice the project templates such as SharePoint 2013, Empty Projects, Silverlight Web Parts, Visual Web Parts, etc. This is very similar to how it was in SharePoint 2010. The classic SharePoint projects are created using the SharePoint 2013 project template. The developer must select a farm solution or a sandbox solution and the URL for the server that they're going to debug this on. This choice can be changed after the project has been created by changing the project property. You can add many different types of project items to a, a solution project. Many of these project items will be familiar to developers who have developed solutions for SharePoint 2010. Also note that there are many of these project item templates will not be available when developing apps. This includes any project item templates that require adding files into the SharePoint root directory as well as any ones that are based on server-side code. Note that the project item templates that are not available in Sandbox Solutions are marked as Farm Solution only. Visual Studio 2012 adds some new features for SharePoint development that were not available in previous versions. This includes project item templates to create site columns and to create custom list definitions using a new visual designer. The list designer makes it possible to create new lists either with or without the use of explicit content types. The best part of the Visual List Designer is that it's able to edit the files for list definitions such as the element XML file and a schema XML file behind the scenes. For adding lists, note that unlike previous versions, Visual Studio 2012 does not provide separate item lists for list instance and list definition. Instead, there's just a single list project item. When you create a new project item based on the list project item type, Visual Studio prompts you to select between two choices, customize the list based on one of the lists, or reuse an existing list. By selecting Customize a List, you are effectively creating a new list definition where you can add custom columns. Visual Studio also creates a list instance from this list definition. By selecting Reuse Existing List, you are simply creating a list instance based on one of the built-in list types such as Announcements, Contacts, or Tasks. Just as in SharePoint 2010, SharePoint solutions are deployed using a special type of cap file with an extension of WSP known as a solution package. A solution package is a container that always holds the manifest file with the well-known name of a manifest. A solution package can optionally contain declarative elements to create site elements such as pages, lists, and navigation items. In the case where a SharePoint solution contains server-side code written in c -sharp or vb.net, a solution package also contains the assembly DLL. A solution package can be deployed in one of two different ways a farm solution deployed at the farm scope, which provides most power to the developer, or a sandbox solution that's deployed at a site collection scope and can be deployed to sites within Office 365. Now we're going to take a look at a demo using the new list designer. We'll go ahead and create a new empty SharePoint project and we'll call that Movies. So the list designer can be used in any SharePoint solution or application. In this case, we'll go ahead and just create a sandbox solution just to show you the base capabilities of the list designer. So I'm in my new movies project and I'll go ahead and add a couple site columns. So we'll add a new item and now we can select the site column to get the schema of the site column. In the past we had to add uh, an XML file and actually handcraft that uh, site column schema. So we'll add genre 
And in our SiteCom, you'll notice that it has a name, display name, uh, the GUID that the SiteCom owns, and then the type. Uh, so we'll go ahead and change the display name to movie genre. And our type will actually make it a choice field. We'll go ahead and also put this in our company's uh, custom columns. So because it's a choice field, we have to specify our choices. So for choices, we'll add a choice for action, action, drama, musical, and comedy. So now we've got all our choices, the action, drama, musical, comedy. We'll go ahead and save this field. We'll add one more column, and we'll call this column released uh, for the year that the movie was released. And we'll go ahead and just keep this a text field, but we'll change the display name to year released. And again, we'll add it to our company's custom columns. All right, now that we've got our two site columns, genre and released, uh, we need to add our new list to this uh, solution. So we'll add another new item, and we'll add the list to it. We'll call our list movies. And in here, we can actually specify if we want a list that's inherited and customizable. So in this case, it could actually be just the default custom list. But we could also add announcements, calendar, contacts, uh, document libraries, and tasks. Also, if we want to just use the base list type and not have it inherited, we can create a, an instance of a non-customizable list. So again, the announcements task list, if we just want to use that out-of-box custom list, not have that uh, inherited and customizable. So in this case, we've got a custom list. We're going to use our, select our default custom list uh, to add our new site columns to it. So now you see our new list designer. Uh, so we've got uh, title, which is uh, one of the base types in there. But now we can also add any other type uh, site column that would say in our site. Something else that's interesting is we can also add content types uh, from our site as well. So we can add uh, items, folders, uh, or if we have other content types that are part of our site, we can add that to our base list uh, that we can deploy into the site. Because we created those new site columns as part of the solution, you can actually see that this shows up in our solution as well. So not only do we have site columns from our base site, but any new custom site columns that we've added and added to our solution uh, get detected and uh, can be used in our list for list designer as well. So I've added my movie genre and my year released uh, to my site. Uh, we can also customize views for this list. So if we want to add different display views, I can actually add uh, the different types of views uh, and which fields get selected on, on that view. And then we can also change maybe the URL or the title or the description of uh, the uh, list as well. So maybe we actually added a, a custom description in here. Uh, we can also display it in the quick launch bar uh, or make it a hidden list. Okay, so now I've got the list in there. I've got in my custom site columns to it. Now I'm ready to go ahead and deploy this list and test it. So once I've hit that de deploy debug, uh, it creates the solution. It puts my list out here. And now I can go out into that list and actually add items to it. So for my new items, I can put, say, Star Wars. It's an action movie that was released in 1977. And we'll go ahead and add another item. And that's how our new list designer works. In this section, we took a brief look at how we can develop applications leveraging the new application model or how we can develop applications leveraging the classic model. We also took a look at the new list designer and how we can leverage that in our solutions. Mm -hmm.